Hi guys, today I wanted to do a video showing off the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Omnibus. So it comes in a really cool hardcover, you know, bigger than usual. Here's the standard size. Here's Batman Universe for side comparison. Kind of definitely bigger. So it comes with a really nice uh, dust jacket. Cool artwork in the back. Here's the edge. The spine. Very cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off the dust jacket and um, kind of show the interior artwork. We got the Krang, Shredder, Bebop, and Rocksteady. Really cool mutagen color. Kind of do that in the back as well with uh, Batman working on the Batmobile raft and all the inner workings of the back cave. One thing to point out is I did get some bending which kind of happens a lot with um, with dust jackets. But the artwork on it's really cool. I'm glad I'm seeing Donatello there. He's my favorite turtle. I don't like to read hard covers with the dust jackets on. So we got a really cool wraparound cover, kind of showing off like different versions of the turtles, different versions of Batman, as, long, uh, as well as like other members of the Bat family, like Batgirl, uh, Damien as Robin, Nightwing. I really like um, like kind of end pages and in between pages. They show kind of uh, in this kind of like really dark green color, like just different artwork that kind of matches the style of the original Ninja Turtles books, which I thought that was really cool. This book is like loaded with artwork towards the back as well. Um, this is only the first part of my review. I've only read through the first uh, story so far. So here's the table of contents. Um, there was three series, three mini series. Each one has six issues. Forward by Kevin Eastman, where he talks about how Batman was a big inspiration for his Ninja Turtles books, and how it was a dream come true for him to be able to, um, to kind of help bring this together. Um, and he just talks about how how much of a joy it is to see these two universes com uh, collide. So here's uh, the first issue. It's a really cool, uh, strong cover. Here's another example of one of these pages. Each one of these pages is different from what I could see in between the issues. Um, so I just really love that. So we start off in a lab in, uh, in Gotham in the, the Foot Clan is causing some trouble. This will go into spoilers, of course. Um, and I really like this introduction of the turtles. I really like the stark contrast and the and the dark colors for them, you know, showing them in the shadows. And I wish um, that kind of artwork would come across more or would be seen more throughout the issue. I haven't, I've only read through the first series, so we'll see. But I think it looks really awesome. It looks so cool. Got an introduction to Batman there, and um, turtles, you know, getting their pizza. This is really just a a, a springboard um, for the story, and it kind of it's kind of like a mystery as to why the turtles are in Gotham, and 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 a big part of the story is you know realizing what happened, and them solving. Um, the issue of them being stuck in Gotham and and them trying to get back to their universe. And one of the really fun things that they do is um, there's kind of like some overlapping within the universes as far as how like Killer Croc is in the sewers. So you would expect you, you'd expect there to be an encounter between the Turtles and and Killer Croc. And we get that. That's like one of the first interactions and it's really cool. 
and then uh you know batman has history with ninjas you know with the the league of shadows or league of assassins so it's not his first rodeo with the, with the ninjas but this is the first time of course that he sees the foot clan and here we get some really cool action and uh you know mikey's the the comedic relief but all the turtles here uh, as far as the first series, they get their time to shine. They all get their cool moments. And um, just the artwork is so cool. I wasn't expecting uh, the level of violence as well. There's there's some there's some blood going on. There's some kind of kind of hardcore stuff. I really like Splinter in this story. Um, he's just trying to protect his children, very wise. And um, as you go through the story, you see there's like a mutual respect between Batman and Splinter. And um, I think that's the end of the first issue. Let's go into the next issue. Really cool artwork and action all the way throughout. Um, I really like how they were able to blend the action um, with some exposition, kind of explaining how the turtles have gotten here, and uh, all the characters trying to figure out how to move forward. The uh, Batman trying to figure out who the turtles are and where their loyalties lie. Are they good or bad? And um, you know, the first rule of comic books is if you have two heroes or two sets of heroes or teams meet each other, they have to fight when they first meet. And that's always fun. And um, seeing as they're teenagers, I think it is appropriate that Batman is the one to actually win and, and win pretty easily. But I do really like how when it comes to him fighting Splinter, that's where it's a little bit tougher. And uh, it, it just kind of reminds me of... Splinter kind of reminds me of Yoda in this one. Because yeah, I guess of his stature and his wisdom and stuff. So he's more of a match for, for Batman, of course. And I, I really like to see that. Um, part of the, the story is Raph is, is, is really uh, suspicious of Batman... But all the other turtles really like him. You know, Donnie likes his gadgets. Uh, Leo likes how much of a leader he is. Or, you know, what a respectable hero he is. While um, Michelangelo just idolizes him. You get some cool scenes here with um, with Bruce and, and Lucius. Kind of explaining... This is, this is kind of... This page right here is really important to the story. Kind of explaining... Um, how there's kind of like a race against the clock because the turtles have somehow gotten into Gotham, but the mutagen within them is breaking down, so they'll slowly revert back to um, to regular turtles, or, or or they might even die. So there's kind of like a, that that race against the clock element, and Splinter is kind of aware or made aware. He's trying to figure out um, how to keep his his kids safe. Meanwhile, Shredder is over here making alliances with the Penguin. And, um, you know, he's just that looming threat throughout the story. He's up to something. And um, right away, just manhandling the Penguin. As he should, I feel like he's the, he's the most menacing out of them. And of course, you know, the turtles and Splinter are like living under the ground. They're able to find their way to the Batcave. And that's a really cool setup. Over here we see, um, you know, more of that end artwork there. The Robin. Um, Shredder and Penguin up to no good. Maybe even... Uh, Kidnapped the doctor who's responsible for this, like, 
cross-dimensional universe traveling machine thing. By this point, uh, the Turtles and Batman are, are teamed up and it calls for some really cool action sequences. We'll scratch that. Well, they're, they're getting there. And here's where we find out what actually happened. Um, there's Splinter telling uh, to Bruce what's going on. Alerting him of the situation and the, the immediate danger that Shredder presents. And... Um, the turtles are, they've already, um, they're already looking as Batman as the leader and that kind of pisses Raph off. So as you can see, like there's really cool artwork all the way throughout this thing. And um, really cool meetups and stuff like Raz Al Ghul joining the fray. And this issue is really cool. I think this is the third issue because... Um, Raph and, and and Batman need to reconcile and I really like the artwork here for the Joker. It's kind of eerie. And I think it was it was wise of him to take a back seat in this issue. Um he's kind of a darker villain. And, um, I don't know, a, a little bit more complex as well. So I'm glad it's just the Shredder being the main antagonist here and, and Ra's al Ghul. One thing about this is it's going to really make you want pizza. Anytime you read a Turtles thing or watch a Turtles show and stuff like that, you're always going to want pizza. Here we see a Batman training with the Turtles. Raph has had it with everyone idolizing Batman. The evil schemes getting closer to fruition here. Casey comes back to help his friends. Raph learns who Batman is and kind of lets go of his suspicions of him and and um, they all come together as a team. Meanwhile it's revealed what Shredder wants to do. He wants to go to Arkham and, and get the mutagen to all the, the villains. Commissioner Gordon now that's awesome like just a shot of the turtles with a bat signal oh man it's just so cool this is a really cool team up and i, I like the way the uh the comedy is brought in you know weaved in here and there with mikey He's always great. Damien's a really cool Robin. He's the most aggressive and dangerous. They look look at this stuff a little bit quicker now um, but all the Arkham villains get get mutated which are just cool looks kind of goofy you know that stuff only works with the turtles um,
But in this case, it is cool. You know, just seeing them all come together. They just needed some bad guys to punch and stuff. Shredder and Raza are the main villains here. And that's the... That's kind of the end. Can't wait to, to read the next part. Um, it ends with the turtles, you know, going back home. So I, I'm kind of curious as to where it's going to go now. Um, but I, I overall, I really enjoyed the first uh, series. I think it's really cool that they, they met up two more times. And um, it's just overall really fun. And the book itself is really cool. And I just can't wait to read the next part.